So tonight we're talking about population planning. Um, we're going to do this thing that I call the length of stay game. Um, it's a way that I came up with for showing people how animals flow through shelters. So the rules of the game are every shelter has an intake every 30 seconds. Both shelters have an intake every 30 seconds. It's just like real life. <laughs> At least the way it feels, right, sometimes. Um, and shelter A has an average length of stay of one minute. So once you come into shelter A, you have to stay for a minute. After you stay for a minute, you get to go home. And this game is all live release, thankfully. <laughs> um, in shelter B, Again, one intake every 30 seconds, but in Shelter B, everybody stays for three minutes. Okay, so I'm going to start the clock. Number one, come on down. <laughs> Number two, get ready. <laughs> so what's going to happen at 30 seconds? What's going to happen in shelter A at 30, in, at 30 seconds? They'll have how many animals in their shelter? Two. Two. Okay? Get ready. Come on, John. Number twos. Shelter B has how many animals? Two. Two. They each have an intake every 30 seconds, right? What's going to happen at one minute in shelter A? They're still going to have two. Why? One's going to come. Yep, yeah, so one's going to leave and another one's going to come. You ready? Number threes. <laughs> okay. And whoever was number one gets to go home, right? So their first adoption. Yay! But what's happening in Shelter B? Nobody went home yet and it's kind of filling up, right? What else is happening in shelter A that you're noticing? What's going to happen at 1 minute 30 seconds with shelter A? Come show us. Number fours. So I'm going to stop it for one side. Oh! Are you feeling kind of stray? Yes. <laughs> They're used to sharing a cage. It's they're used to sharing a cage. It's okay. At least maybe they're a bonded pair. <laughs> so what happened over here, though? It stayed the same. It stayed the same. Is it going to change? So they reached a steady state, right? If they continue having one intake every 30 seconds and having an average length of stay of one minute, it'll stay the same, right? So this is going to be pretty boring. You guys go ahead on your merry way here. But this shelter is going to, nope, you got to just keep doing your time. But this shelter is going to stay the same, right? It's just going to stay like this. What's going to happen over here at two minutes? It's going to get real awkward in cage three. <laughs> Start getting awkward. Red J. All right. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> so they gotta make a decision, right? Should they put three in one cage? They could mix genders. <laughs> they could have, you know, put an aggressive animal with a friendly animal who just came in. He's feeling kind of stressed because he doesn't know where he's gonna go. They, they're gonna have to rearrange their hierarchy, right, and figure out who's in charge over there. And somebody's going to start sneezing probably soon. <laughs> okay, so now, did somebody come down for two minutes and 30 seconds? I did. Uh, not over here, though. Right? We need one more. <laughs> and she's thrilled to get to this shelter, right? So what's going to happen over here at three minutes? You get to go. And one more person so then everybody else gets to fight over this case, right? So what just happened over here then? So what just happened over here in this shelter? Now it's staying the same, right? So they reach their steady state. 
So now it's going to just keep going like this, right? Because every 30 seconds someone's going to go, every 30 seconds someone's going to come in. So it took this shelter longer to get to steady state. Next one, come on down. It took this shelter longer to get to steady state, but once they're at steady state, they're going to just stay the same. Does that make sense? And shelters don't usually start at zero. I'm just showing you kind of how it fills up. But So if we go forward from here, and you guys can go sit down, but you guys got to wait. <laughs> so if we go forward from here, which shelter would adopt more animals? Which shelter would have a greater um, live release? A. A. Why? Because they look happier not sitting on each other's lap. So they have a, they, you think they have a better potential for adoption. If we follow the same rules, though, which shelter releases more? This shelter always has two animals. This shelter always has six. One, which one releases more animals alive? According to our rules. Volume or percentage? Mm, just numbers, absolute numbers. It's the same. I heard somebody say it's the same. Does that make sense? They have an intake every 30 seconds, and they actually have somebody who leaves every 30 seconds, too, once they get to steady state. So same shelter. What about the intake? Is it the same? So intake is the same. Live release is the same. Who's spending more money? Whose staff are more stressed? Whose animals are more stressed? <laughs> and then what you were saying, I think, comes into play because who has a better potential for increasing adoptions, right? And who has a better potential for losing potential adoptions, right? Because he's cute now, but if he gets sick, then he's not <laughs> <as> desirable, right? <laughs> so how do we get out of it? What do we do? Instead of just keeping up with the game, let's figure out how we can get out of this situation. How can we make this situation more like this situation? Fosters. Limit. OK, let's take those in order. So we could send some to foster. What would Tell me what that would help with. Animals packed in together in the shelter. So it would, it would decrease the population in the shelter. But do you think there's an ever-expanding pool? in foster, you'd reach a new steady state, right? It's just like if I added a chair, right? So at least one more animal would have a place to sit down, but you'd still have as many in your pool. Does that make sense? So it would solve the temporary crowding problem, but it might not solve the ongoing problem. It would certainly help. And what was the other thing that somebody said? Decrease length of stay. Decrease length of stay. What would happen if we do that? Let's try it. So let's try, now I'm gonna change the rule and I'm gonna say we're gonna fast track a couple of animals. So the next two animals that come in, well the next one we're gonna fast track. So come on down, who's at number four? Who's at four minutes? So she looks super cute. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna do everything I could possibly do to send her home as quickly as I possibly can. So I'm going to make sure that she gets everything she needs. Somebody needs to go home. So grab the chair, because you're fast track. <laughs> and so we're going to say she's going to go home in one minute. So you only stay one minute. So at five minutes, you're going to go home. So somebody goes home at four minutes 30, right? Yeah, and somebody, but somebody else comes, so we're still at our steady state. What's going to happen now at five minutes? Two will leave. Two will leave. So we do actually have to increase the number of adoptions in order to be able to, um, temporarily we have to, to decrease our length of stay. But let's see what happens. So at five minutes, you leave, and I think you leave, yep. So wow, now we have two extra seats. You guys can take those, but one person's coming in. And we'll fast track him too. <laughs> so you're gonna be fast tracked too. Oh, so I you're need, gonna leave. I need a cage. No. You're gonna leave in a minute. <laughs> He's fast tracking, oh, yeah. he gets a, yeah, well you can share, so we're gonna fast track him. 
And so somebody, we're, I'm gonna have you just stay just so we can see it because there's a few of us. But so somebody would leave at 5:30 and somebody else would come. Oh, good. We have. Thank you. And what's gonna happen at six minutes? Two will leave again. So we have to have some kind of either an adoption special. Or maybe what we're really doing is just identifying the ones that come in that are super cute and have a better chance of getting home. And so we're making sure they get through as quickly as, as possible. And so that's why we do have to increase our adoptions temporarily. Great. So now we got down to three and we have three cages. What if I don't fast track any more animals? What will happen? Then, then I'll have a new steady state, right? But if I don't want my steady state to be here, so now I could continue, I could, what, what, so look, you guys can go sit down. Thanks. So the point of it is to sort of think about what, um, what you think's in the way, what do we need to do in order to increase our efficiency and decrease our length of stay? Any ideas? What increases the length of stay, do you think? Animals don't look adopted. So, okay, I agree, probably. If, if we don't do something to sort of help the animals get adopted, so maybe they are, there was one great study um, that I was just citing uh, this week that showed that if animals, the ASPCA did it, if animals have toys in their cages, even if they're not playing with them, people think the animals look more desirable. So there's a good one for that. What do you think, what defines length of stay in a shelter? So it's the time they get into the time that they leave, but what makes it short or long? If you have a straight period. If you have a stray period, okay, great. So it could be that if this shelter was in Wisconsin and the stray holding period is eight days pretty much, it's seven, but it doesn't include the day they came in on. And it could be that shelter A was in somewhere else where they have a two or three day stray holding period, right? That could be the difference. What else? More animals coming in sick to the shelter, so more animals needing treatment, possible. Hard to change if it's really that they're coming in that way. Or like for sanitation or you are right in the shelter and it spreads and you don't adopt because of the sick. Okay, so infectious disease in the shelter that's creating a cycle where they need to treat so they have to stay longer and longer. So that's one where the fast tracking really works well because they come in, they stay a really short time, they never get sick and they get out. Yeah? Can you like, bring it down to the fact too that maybe the shelter isn't looked upon as a great organization in the community so people don't want to go there? For sure, so community perceptions and just the number of adoptions. But remember, which shelter did more adoptions? It was the same, right? So it's not that they're doing actually less adoptions. So keep that in mind. Like, so they ended up, they have more animals in the shelter, not because they're not doing the same number of adoptions, but because they're keeping animals in the shelter longer. So, I joke about this all the time because, you know, I wasn't originally a veterinarian. I went back to school to do all my pre-vet courses and, and, and then do all my veterinary work. And I joke all the time that I did it um, so that now I can travel around the world and explain to people that five is actually half of ten. Um, because that's probably the most important thing for shelters to understand when they're thinking about the way that they manage their population and the way that animals move through their population. Because here it's one in three, right? But if you think about it, if five animals come in every day and they stay for five days, they have 25 animals to take care of. Five come in every day and they stay for 10 days, now you've got 50 animals. What's really cool, though, is that it works backwards, too. So if you have 200 animals because five come in every day and they stay for 20 days, and you can find efficiencies in your system to put in place 
you can get that from 200 animals to 100 animals just by improving efficiency. Not by changing anything about how many animals are euthanized. So it's not, you don't go from 200 to 100 by killing more animals, right? You go actually by releasing more temporarily to get from 200 to 100, but then you stay there by decreasing your length of stay. Does this make sense? It's really cool. And it's really, really cool when you see it in action. Yeah? By attaching animals, do some of the more unattractive animals stay longer? Not in my experience. So that's what's kind of been very interesting, is that it probably has to do with supply and demand. So if we think about, and that's what often gets asked. So at Animal Rescue League of Boston, um, when we first went there and we were talking to them about doing this, the first reaction was, it's really not fair. It's not fair that some animals get to bump ahead in the line, you know, to wait to go out for adoption. And the way that I've always talked about it is that it really is fair to me because everybody gets exactly as much time in the shelter as they actually need to get out of there. So if a little orange kitten comes in and all it needs is half an hour to meet somebody and go home, that's all it should get. And because it doesn't do it any good to have it stay longer. So it's not about giving them the bottom's rush and sending them out before it's you know, a good time. And it's certainly not about setting time limits. But what happens is, if the animals who only need a short time leave more quickly, then you have more time to spend paying attention to everybody else. And the population itself is lower, and so the risk of infectious disease is gone. Uh, not gone, but much improved, much lowered. Um, the opportunity to give housing. So think of the difference in housing 100 animals versus 200 animals. That really is the difference between single-sided housing units and double-sided housing units in lots of shelters. And um, I'll show you some examples where they actually just, they, then they cut holes and they give each animal two cages because they're able to lower their population. And so for in many cases, what we see is that an animal that would have been maybe a shy cat in a shelter that had 200 animals, in a shelter that only has 100 animals, that cat does so much better. I mean, how do we know, right? Because we don't know what it would have been, but we can sort of see that happening sometimes, that the animal does so much better because it's, it, it, you're better able to provide the kind of care that they need. So the unwinding thing is temporary, but then once it's unwound to kind of keep it unwound is what's really important. Hopefully what you can appreciate from this too, though, is how easy it is to do the winding up. All you need is something like an outbreak <coughs> to temporarily increase length of stay, and then you can really expand a population. Does that make sense? And then you've got to realize that that happened, and then shrink it back down again. Sometimes it's not even just an outbreak. Sometimes it's like, a holiday and the shelter is closed for three days and what you'll see is that increases length of stay and so you'll end up with a bunch more animals 